Hi guys, it's not getting boring in Iceland. That volcanic system seems to come up with a new version of itself uh, all the time. So what has happened? It seems that we have seen a magma intrusion and not an eruption because there was an earthquake swarm that started and moved along the magma dike that has formed on November 10th, but it didn't lead up to a surface eruption with lava coming out. And that's a good thing, right? This is really great so far if nothing else comes after it. Um, yesterday or the, the day before yesterday on the 29th, the Icelandic Met Office did change their hazard map if you look at that hazard map with the purple areas that's basically along that magma dike that has formed on November 10th and we have already seen two eruptions in this area um, in December and uh, then we've seen one in January and then uh, three eruptions sorry and then we've seen one in February and the darker spots that you see there these are the lava flow areas where the lava did flow. So you see in the orange areas, the last eruption, the lava did flow in zone three and zone one, where the Blue Lagoon and the power plant is located. So it seems the magma intrusion that just happened did happen in the purple areas again. So what exactly um, happened? So the earthquakes began Icelandic time um, around 355 at the southern end of the fissure where it erupted um, in December. So the Sutnuka crater series. And then the seismic activity has moved southeast along the magma tunnel and then it stopped at Hagafell. And uh, then the deformation that they are measuring is a lot smaller than they had measured it in previous eruptions. So it could indicate that this time less magma was on the move than in previous eruptions. And the depth of these earthquakes, of that seismic activity, um, in their opinion, does not indicate that the magma is moving to the surface at the moment. It can change later, but it doesn't really look like this. So it is less likely that this intrusion will lead to an eruption, but they are saying it is not out of the picture. It can still happen. So this is one of the scenarios that they had mentioned in their previous predictions when they said the eruption is imminent. There's always the chance that there could be a magma flow without an eruption. So basically, Blue Lagoon was evacuated, Grindavik was evacuated. We'll talk about this shortly. I want to talk about a little bit about the magma chamber that is underneath the Swartzengi area. So before that rumbling, before the incident that has just happened, um, they were saying that their calculations kind of say that there would be around 8.5 to 9 million cubic meters um, of magma in that magma chamber underneath Swartzengi and the land rise, so the speed that it has been rising with, filling up with in the past few days is basically was quite constant and you know the probability of an eruption would increase the more and more that magma chamber fills up and especially when the, the chamber has reached a volume between 8 million cubic meters and 13 million cubic meters. So what they are saying it's about half a million cubic meters of magma accumulates under Swartzengi per day. So what will be interesting in the coming days is, and hopefully the Met Office will release an update soon, is how much magma do they think has flown out of that magma chamber at this intrusion? So where are we now? Is it rising again? And then if we say half a million cubic meters accumulates per day, then we can kind of estimate how many days we need until it reaches a capacity again that could lead to another intrusion 
or eruptions. So that is for me an interesting part to, to monitor. So at this point, that micro seismic activity, just an accumulation of smaller earthquakes that has started just a little bit before four o'clock Icelandic time in the afternoon has stopped right now. And it's also most likely that the magma flow that came with it has stopped by now because when the magma is on the move, it rumbles. That's why it creates these smaller earthquakes. And since it's quiet now, it seems it has stopped moving. Um, they're still continuing to measure the deformations in the area. It's a little bit too early now um, to, to say that the magma flow is over completely and that there will absolutely be no eruption this time. Um, so they just need to watch it for a few hours after it st had stopped. They have to continue to watch it to really be sure. So they will continue to monitor the area and they will look for signs whether the activity is picking up again or will it be quiet. So there is still a possibility that the magma that has flown there, that's in that magma dive right now, can get up to the surface somehow. The area there, the crust has been damaged and is brittle because of the previous eruptions and intrusions that have happened there. And we have seen something like this before when the volcanic eruptions at Fagradalsfjall happened. And these eruptions are kind of similar. So it's not over yet. It looks like it is, but it still could creep up to the surface. So that's what we have to wait for. So when that earthquake swarm has started, they started to evacuate Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon. And I'm a little bit surprised that it took so long to evacuate Grindavik. It took about an hour to evacuate Grindavik and it took about 40 minutes to evacuate the Blue Lagoon. So at around 4 p.m. the evacuation of the Blue Lagoon started. They don't know exactly how many people were in there, but definitely more people than when we had the last evacuations because the last evacuations happened during the night so there were only hotel guests they're not day guests so this happened now around 4 p.m so the about six to eight hundred people were inside the blue lagoon and that is including staff and guests of the spa and also the resort and the hotels so it took them 40 minutes to complete the evacuation that's what the manager of the Blue Lagoon has said. Um, so 40 minutes and it took about an hour to evacuate Grindavik. They are saying that the evacuations did go just fine. And now they're saying that um, after everything this, now they will have the closing phase of both Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon as, as usual. And that's basically what happens after every evacuation. Um, so also they will close the three main access roads for Grindavik, that's Grindavik Ovego, Nesvega and Sudur Stranda Vega. So what they will do and the heroes, the contractors, they are kept in the area so that they can run the dozers and the excavators. So we know that there are some gaps in the defense walls where the roads go in and out so that you know the roads can be used and people can access the areas but they always have dozers and excavators on standby so that these and material of course so that these can push the material quickly to close the gap should the lava come to that area so that the lava will not get through these openings so those guys are staying in place so overall, I think this went pretty smoothly. The thing that concerns me because they said there is always a likelihood and they have gone through various scenarios that there could also be an eruption right inside of Grindavik. It was less likely, but they didn't rule it out. And if the evacuation takes one hour, that's quite long. So let's imagine there is an eruption inside Grindavik and that lava is flowing quite fast. Um, one hour, I'm surprised because they told the residents 
park your cars the way that the car points in the direction where you're going that you don't have to back up and maneuver that you can get in the car and go that's why i'm surprised they don't know exactly how many people were in the town i mean but you know thank god they all got out and nothing happened that's that's the most important thing so i think everyone was lucky it was good uh, so that was a sort of thing best case scenario if that doesn't have any implications on the next eruption so we will have to see what the status of the magma chamber is so that was my update the you know if something else is happening i'll update you as well this time i've been sleeping while the earthquakes were happening so but there was no eruption so um i didn't miss it or i didn't miss anything too much um, i'm glad i caught the last three eruptions in time so i will keep you updated in the meantime check out my other videos um there is something finally after a while some news about the titan disaster some mysterious underwater noises have been recorded and have been released for the first time since the incident has happened last year in june so that was something new and exciting and and kind of terrifying scary um so check this out i'll put the video in the end screen and if you want to know more about what's going on in iceland i have an iceland playlist and uh yeah check it out guys uh, if you like this video leave it a like and subscribe that would be awesome and i hope to see you very very soon bye bye